Hello everyone, welcome back to an academy. This is Deepak Krishna VM, ME Structural Engineering AMI, a verified educator. So uh, in today's lesson, we are going to see some of the most important natural aggregates that uh, take part in the lightweight concrete. All right. So before that, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel of the academy. Also follow us through the other platforms like Facebook apps and the website. So let's start. Hello everyone, good to see you. Hope you're having a good time. So previously we have seen some of the important aspects of lightweight concrete, okay? And in the previous lesson we have also discussed some of the important classifications of the lightweight concrete. So as lightweight concrete, it also has a lot of ingredients present inside in it. So one of the most uh, important ingredient is the aggregate, okay? Which is one of the most defining factors in the lightweight concrete. So today we are going to see some of the natural aggregates that takes part in the lightweight concrete matrix, so lightweight concrete in general okay so the natural aggregates so before that let's see what actually aggregates are in context of uh, lightweight concrete so first and foremost so we, we know that the aggregates especially we're talking about the coarse aggregates right here so coarse aggregates are one of the most important uh, and one of the most fundamental aggregate in the i mean ingredient in a concrete matrix i have done a detailed course based on the coarse aggregates in my profile you can check over there and uh, so it imparts a lot of structural uh, behavior or structural properties to the concrete. Okay, so here also aggregate space plays a vital role. Vital role. So what are the aggregates we used here? So the aggregates those weigh less than thousand kilogram per meter cube are considered considered for the lightweight concrete. Okay, so since these are very much lighter in shape, uh, lighter in uh, in density or lighter in uh, strength. Uh, these uh, weight i mean so these are considered for the lightweight concrete all right so lightweight uh, so since uh, this aggregates are light in weight okay so why this is so light this lightweight is also is mainly due to the highly porous microstructure okay okay so because of this the highly porous microstructure they are light in weight and uh, but you know uh, some of the uh, natural aggregates like wood chips okay cellular materials like wood chips cannot be used because of the lack of durability so because of the lack of durability and also uh, it is also not much durable in the uh, alkaline uh, environment of the cement okay of the portland cement alkaline environment uh, it's not so durable so because of some of these cases some of the natural aggregates doesn't qualify to be a lightweight aggregate concrete lightweight aggregate of the concrete all right so lightweight aggregate can be divided into natural and artificial so in today's lesson let's see some of the natural aggregates of the lightweight concrete all right so let's start with the natural aggregates so here we go so let's see some of the important natural aggregates that uh, that is used in the industry today first one is pumic diatomite scoria volcanic cinders silica sand gravel and crust stone volcanic tuff volcanic slag and sawdust so let's see each one one by one so first one is a pumic okay so pumic is one of the most uh, what can we say relatable and uh, one of the substances that we all know really well because it's one of that material that is used in the cosmetic industry in nowadays okay so not only cosmetic industry pumic can be used for the lightweight aggregate as unit, unit can be used as a lightweight aggregate also okay so let's see what pumic actually is so this uh, these are the rocks of volcanic origin okay so this is the one of the most widely used uh, lightweight aggregate in the lightweight concrete and this is also among the oldest lightweight aggregate that is used till date okay the history can be seen started from the roman empire itself so why while this is light but these are strong enough to be considered as aggregate okay so that's why it performs really well actually so the act the actually properties of pumic is that they usually light colored okay or mostly nearly white in color has even texture of interconnected cells okay so one of the reason of the strength for pumic actually okay it's light in color so it looks good and also the texture the it's a small texture and also the internal cells are really interconnected which makes the bonding very strong and hence it makes a stronger one even though the pumic is light in weight okay now let's move on to the one more time so how pumic is used these are mined washed and then used okay after mining the pumic is washed in the running water and if required some of the chemical processes are also introduced if required only if if and only if it is required okay 
so they are used again so and they also may be sintered to point of incipient fusion when a much stronger aggregate is required okay in some cases the aggregate required should be uh, much more stronger should that need to be much more stronger so in such cases uh, pumic are sintered okay to the point of incipient fusion so okay in such cases and also uh, an another property of pumic is that they have they have high silica content and high alkali alkali content okay but they are low in calcium and magnesium content so that's all for pumic so next let's move on to the next one that is the silica sand so silica sand is also another uh, material that we all are familiar with okay especially if you are a final student you're doing with some project with the concrete especially this thing silica sand will have a small part to do in that all right so how silica sand be used so any silica sand those are that are su suitable for ordinary concrete that can ca that is also qualified for the lightweight concrete too okay and also uh, it should not contain clay or other organic contents as we all know any of the organic contents can imp uh, impart the growth in it which will reduce the bond strength between the aggregates okay and also the clay content means the water retention will be too high that means the water retained inside will be high so which will uh, disrupt the water seven ratio so the silt content should not be less than should be less than six percentage so the maximum silt content in the silica sand should be six percentage okay so in all uh, lightweight concretes no fine concretes and graded concretes are majorly made out of uh, silica sand okay so silica sand is a very important player in the lightweight concrete industry so some of them almost all the lightweight concrete uh, especially the no fines and graded are mainly made out of silica sand okay now next one we are going to see is the gravel and crushed stone okay so as we all know gravels are small small stones so we can see which we can see in the surroundings and also these are some of the most familiar type of uh, stones and also crushed stones are stones which are crushed to a certain uh, limit or certain particle size in accordance to the need okay so any gravel or any crushed stones that will uh, fulfill the standards are suitable for the no fine concrete so these are mainly used in the no fine concrete manufacture or non fine concrete production so there is a set of rules for uh, for for the non fine concrete so any gravel or stones which qualifies these rules or these criteria are qualified to be an aggregate for the no fine concrete okay so these are one of the most naturally occurring materials so they must be cleaned thoroughly uh, before use they can be cleaned by it's a very easy, uh, easy procedure to clean them because only flushing water is required okay a clean flushing water is used to clean the gravel and crushed stone and they are used as such okay so the strength in, in these types of concrete are mainly depend upon the uh, bond development bond development between the aggregates okay if it's a good bond developed between the aggregates the concrete will be really strong in such cases the crushed stones performs better than the gravel because of the higher surface area because of the higher other properties the crushed stones are more preferred over gravel in such conditions to if strength is your primary importance okay now uh, let's see what so that's all for today's lesson because of the lack of time i couldn't include the other ones inside so definitely it will be uh, continued in my next lesson so thank you once again for being a good listener please comment your suggestions please rate my pres please rate my presentation please recommend and share the slides this is my profile link to the an academy platform please copy this in your browser you can see i've done a lot of course based on the coarse aggregate fine aggregate cement uh, properties of factors affecting the workability of concrete fresh concrete and also the hardened concrete now and also the almost all the tests based on the concrete is also is in my profile please go and check there it is explained in the most detail and the simplest form so thank you once again for being a good listener i'll see you in the next video until then ciao